Dwarka of Shri Krishna is mentioned a lot in Mahabharata and many other Puranas. According to the legend, when the Magad king Jarasandh became a threat to his people, Lord Krishna moved to the coasts of Gujarat and established Dwarka. However, the holy city was later submerged in the ocean after the death of Shri Krishna. If you believe Mahabharat, then in Mosul Parv, it is written that the city was submerged in the Arabian Sea when Sri Krishna died. And according to the astronomical dates, the year would be somewhere around 3000 BCE. In the late 90s, a group of marine archaeologists went to the same place as described in the books and found the ancient city. Before its discovery, a group of scholars was of the view that Mahabharata is a myth, hence there is no point in looking for some city that never existed. Exploring the sea will be a total waste of time and money. But the onshore and offshore excavations done by Dr. S. R. Rao prove that the description we found of this ancient city in all the literature is not to be discarded completely. Submerged cities and sunken ships are great treasure houses of our cultural heritage. India is one of the very few countries in the world which has set up a marine archaeology center for excavating sunken ships and submerged ports. The center at the National Institute of Oceanography has given high priority for exploration of Dwarka, which is said to have been founded by Lord Krishna. Let's see what the reports say. So this research proves the legend. The onshore and offshore excavations confirm the existence of a city with a couple of satellite towns and that they were submerged by the sea is also proved. According to Harivansh Puran, the area of the whole city was around 12 yujan, which is also the area found to be of this excavated city. It is even visible in low tides. Isn't it amazing? What is even more startling are the coins and seals found. According to Harivansha, once the kingdom of Dwarika was under attack from King Selva, due to which Lord Krishna devised a plan that special seals would be used to identify only the genuine residents of Dwarika. The seals or mudras would be the mark of identification for the citizens. The information and material secured through the underwater excavations of Dwarika corroborates with the references to the city of Dwarika we found in the great epic Mahabharat and various other Sanskrit literary works. The present findings corroborate the description of the city of Dwarka as given in the Mahabharata that it was a Varidurga, that is, a fortress in water. Carbon dating of the artifacts found in the excavations fall under 3500 BCE, correlating with the astronomical dates of the Mahabharata war. The excavated pottery from Bad Dwarika and also from the underwater city dates to be around 3500 years before present. In 2001, NIOT found some new artifacts. Some of them, including some wood logs, are as old as 7500 BCE, coinciding with the Saraswati civilization. Initially, when we went, we thought probably we'll be on an early Arapan site, but after seeing all the artifacts and evidences what we have collected, it looks that they are before the Harappan yes. uh, period. It's, which is so exciting. It looks like a twin city or a twin metropolis of right. ancient times. Maybe this is the beginning of a major uh, discovery for uh, the world. Dr. Murli Manohar, who conducted this research, said that they even found a trail of some Paleolithic age river. That river is believed to be Saraswati. Okay originated in the Himalayas 
and float down this channel which is dried up is still it can be made out yes. you see here as a dark colored channels it flowed parallel to the indus river and took a southward turn and further flowing it finally joined with the run of kutch more than 22 kilometers 22, 22 kilometers broad, broad. Wow. it is described in the vedas that it was mightiest river of that time. Mm -hmm. The river was flowing 10,000 years and it continued up to uh, 6,000 years before present. Following that, he found a few more underwater ruins. Let me quote an excerpt from the report regarding this. The buildings are evenly spaced and contain deep foundation within the seabed. A number of regular steps seem apparent within a number of the structures. A feature called the fortress is nearly 98 meters in length. Something very different than what you see now. Right. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. see very square features. Yeah. And I can this see is a lovely very... series of right angles here. Yeah. They are all platform-like features. Yeah. Uh, the, the present length of this is about 98 meter. Right angled structures. Yeah. Which... These are about 77 meter by about 40 meter. Yeah. Actually, there's a series of steps going down. Looks like It's buildings. not a, anything that you normally come across in a marine, this no, one. No. It is obviously man-made. Yeah. Joshi also calls to attention other buildings underwater, including a granary, drainage system, and public path. There can be no doubt that the features are man-made. Computer simulated underwater image of sonar scanned fortress at the Gulf of Khambat off the coast of the Gujarat Peninsula, 131 feet below the water surface. Take a look at this report, which suggests that the Rig Vedic cultural traits such as fire worship, animal sacrifice, disposal of dead by cremation and burial, presence of horse and intensive maritime activity are all conspicuous to Harappan culture. Some from the lower levels, some from the middle levels, some from the top levels. And some of them belong, belong even to a period after the abandonment of the site. So when they don't belong to one and the same level, how can they belong to, the, uh, uh, to a massacre by invading Aryans? The sites excavated shows excellent pictures of maturity, decline and devolution of Indus Valley during 3000 to 1500 BCE as found in all these reports. It suggests that the Vedic culture was indigenous in the Indian subcontinent. One interesting fact about Dwarka is that the city was one of the major port city of India from 3000 BCE to at least around 1700 BCE. It means that the city was important for doing trade, especially sea trade with other civilizations like Mesopotamia and Sumer. So from archaeological perspective, uh, there is no doubt that Dwarka was a city and once upon a time a a very flourishing city which was enjoying uh, Arab-India trade. So does that suggest that India used ships and boats during those ancient times for doing trade with other civilization? Well, wait for my next video for that. Now let's talk about the flood and submersion of the city. Scientists found that the northwestern part of India was active seismically at that time. These earthquakes are likely to have caused the shifting of the rivers and sea level fluctuations including sinking of Dwarka. Thousands of ships have sunk in storms and several flourishing ports have disappeared as a result of the rising sea. Here is the topographical picturization of Dwarka submerging. As you can see, as the years are passing by, the landmass is also disappearing into the sea. Very exposed to the continental shelf. So we progress forward to 13 and a half. Mm -hmm. Now you Big see, change. Yeah, you Very see dramatic. This, uh, island developing off the west coast of India. 
now. It's like a ghost island. You'll notice as we progress further through time that the Gulf of Cambi gradually gets more and more flooded. 12.4. Mm -hmm. 10.6. Yep. 7.7 mm -hmm. to 6.9. Bang. Ah. So yes, the flood indeed happened. And these tectonic activities might have continued and when mixed with the change in climate, they became one of the reasons for the drying up of major rivers along with Saraswati. However, scientists could not agree on a particular date regarding this flood. The Deccan College, Pune, excavated in 1963 Dwarka and came to the conclusion that it was the Dwarka of Mahabharata period. But Dr. Sankalya expressed the opinion that the first settlement at Dwarka could not have been earlier than the first century AD or BC. This, of course, was contrary to all established facts of history because Mahabharata war and the founding of Dwarka cannot be post mauryan events. Unable to conclusively get on a particular date, they relied on the chronology of the artifacts found and the sea level rise. So they estimated and then later confirmed that Dwarka was completely submerged till 17th century BCE. However, most of the claims made by Dr. Rao were not accepted by a large group of scholars, more so because the excavations were stopped due to a lack of funds. Even though whatever little we have found suggests that there was indeed some city along the Gulf of Cambay or Khambat, whatever you call it, which could be as old as 7000 BCE and was a major port city till around 3000 BCE until it got submerged into the ocean by around 1700 BCE. So that's it. The archaeology, whatever little we have done, proves that Dwarika was indeed a real city and not just a work of fiction. Only if they restart the excavations with proper manpower that we can know for sure what is the real truth. So thank you guys. I hope you liked the video. Please feel free to share your views about it in the comments. If you are interested in this topic, please subscribe and well wait for the other videos. Thank you so much.